Here's a question. What does Waffle House have to do with hurricanes? It turns out, if you want to know how bad a storm is going to be, just see if the local Waffle House is still serving breakfast. If they are closed, watch out. Why? Because they almost never close. The Joplin, Missouri tornado in 2011, it wiped out hundreds of businesses. Both Waffle Houses in town, they stayed open. When a blizzard hit Lancaster, Pennsylvania in 2010, Waffle House was open. 24 hours before Hurricane Irma flooded Jacksonville, Florida in 2017, standing room only in the Waffle House. Even federal officials now keep an eye on them as a way of determining how local communities are standing up to Mother Nature. There is even a Waffle House index. Former FEMA Administrator Craig Fugate came up with it and described it on NPR. They are open most of the time, and that's, that was the index. If a Waffle House is closed because it's a disaster, it's bad, we call it red. If they're open but have a limited menu, that's <laughs> yellow because they've lost power. All right, all right. And, and, and if they regular menu, you just, it's everything's fine. They're green, we're good, keep going. You haven't found the bad stuff yet. If they've got a full menu, we are good to go. Walt Amer is the CEO of Waffle House. He joins me now on the phone from Charleston, South Carolina, along with my friend Brendan Greeley, U.S. editor of the Financial Times, Alphaville. All right, Walt, if Waffle Houses tell us how bad the storm is going to be, how many, if any, are closed in the path of Hurricane Florence? Well, we're actually uh, doing pretty well right now. We only have a couple of them closed, um, the ones that are right along the beach. Most of our restaurants, fortunately, are a little bit off the uh, off the water, so we're we're able to keep just about all of them open right now, and uh, and we're busy. And how exactly has the Waffle House become, I don't know, call it the gold standard for figuring out how to weather these big storms? I tell people all, all the time. I said we're really not that smart. We're not that complicated. We just. Uh, we just have a lot of want to. Um, we want to be there for the community. We want to be there for our people. We want to be there for the first responders. So we just show up and get to work and, and work really hard. And uh, and over time, I think people started to recognize in places like even where I'm in, where I'm in right now in Charleston, there's nobody open but us. So um, it just, just became uh, kind of a little folklore over time. And then I heard Craig Fugate's voice there uh on the phone it was nice to uh nice to hear his voice and unfortunately he's retired but uh he uh he gave us a lot of attention when he mentioned us uh we had never met him before he did but i think that's how it really all got started well well i think you're being too humble just there on the screen we showed your sort of command center uh where your team monitors the storms uh how can you ensure i know you want to serve the community and the first responders but you've got an awful lot of employees who are not at home with their families they have not evacuated how do you make sure they're safe well our first concern is their safety and the folks that work for us that are in places that are unsafe uh, a lot of them do leave so we bring a lot of our management team in from around the country to to support the operations and then we buy a whole lot of hotel rooms in, in safe areas. So I think we're up to a couple hundred, maybe 250 hotel rooms right now uh, where our people from out of town are staying and a lot of our local associates are staying as well. So a lot of our folks do leave, and, uh, and we, we first ask them to make sure that they and their families are safe. Uh, but we tend to, uh, tend to put people in places that are much safer and in buildings that are safe. And, if anybody wants to leave, we let them leave, and, and we supplement with people from around the country, typically a lot of our management team. Walt, uh, Brennan Greeley here. I'm a massive fan. I take my eggs covered and smothered. Uh, I, I agree with Steph. I think you're being a little too humble here. Can you tell us a little bit about the, the logistics of how you make sure, for example, the communications are in place? And also, you know, you have to make sure that all of the eggs are there, that the ingredients are there uh, in, in, you know, in the event that supply chains are disrupted. How do you make sure that the stores that are open can actually serve eggs? And waffles. Well, fortunately, <laughs> yes. Hello? Please continue. Oh, I'm sorry. Fortunately, uh, with things like these hurricanes, we have plenty of notice. You mentioned a couple tornadoes there as you were leading in. Uh, those are a little bit more challenging. But with, torn with the hurricanes, we have some notice. So we mobilize a lot of resources ahead of the storm and bring in a lot of extra supplies, a lot of extra food. Those folks you saw sitting around the table are kind of the command center to uh, call a lot of plays, but mostly our management team is out in the field in the restaurants where we can assess what we have and what we need, and we try to get as much 
load it into the restaurants ahead of the storms and prepare with generators and construction folks and electricians and, and all the resources we need. We try to stage nearby so that when the storm finally does come in, we are, we're supplied ahead of time. And then we also have some great suppliers we work with that, uh, that help us out on the back end because when, when you're the only act in town, you tend to go through a lot of food pretty quickly. So there, there is a pretty big logistical challenge. Probably the bigger challenge for us is the people logistical challenge, is, is getting them all in here, finding them places to stay, rental cars, uh, deploying them to the couple hundred restaurants that we have in this affected area. So well, there, there is a lot of work that, that goes into place, and I, I'm not going to tell you we're, we're really good at it. We try to get better every time, and every one of these things is a little bit different. Well, we appreciate it. You are living up to the term comfort food, really creating a safe haven. Help us understand how high is the bar for you to close a restaurant in terms of da uh, weather danger? Well, you know, certainly we work closely with the local authorities. And when they come by and tell us that we are in a in a dangerous place, we will we will close down. So uh, but we have developed really good relationships with the FEMA folks and all the local and state agencies that we uh, where we operate, and so we've got good communications with them, and we know where where our restaurants are that might be in harm's way, and that that would cause us to close it down. Uh, and then, you know, obviously, when the storm is really rolling in near the eye of the storm, we will we will probably shut down just to make sure our folks are sheltering in a safe place. But we don't try to get too far away so we can get back in there quick. And if you think about it, all these uh, first responders and and the folks who did choose to stay behind, um, there's no other place for them to get any food. So, so we we sense it somewhat of a almost an obligation at this point. But it's a huge part of our culture to be there for the community all the time. And I guess that that comes from working for a restaurant chain that that never closes. So, and while uh, Waffle House in general is a huge point of pride and destination down in the south. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.